Okay, can you write that down? got that? Yeah? Okay, so let's have a look at this theorem. So, Lamy's tree first theorem comes about when we have special types of problems. Mm -hmm. um, you see in this picture there are in this picture, this is a picture of a special system in physics. It's special because there are three forces acting on the system. Guys, you know you can move. There's like plenty of empty seats. So, do you need to move? I can. Yeah, there's an entire other half of the room over there. Yeah. You know? <coughs> but actually, yes, yeah, son. I don't want you sitting there because I think it'd be better if you sit somewhere else. Mm -hmm. So you can either. Move down a little bit, or move over there. Which would you prefer? For me? Yeah, because it actually does block a lot of people here. If that's the people sit on this row. Where okay. do you want to sit? Okay, I sit here. Is okay. Oh, I sit. You want to move over there? That's fine. Right. Okay. Yes. Okay. Now uh, we we're saying that this is a special system because. Three forces are acting on the system, and the system is in equilibrium. So the three forces are one here, one here, and one here. So it's a special type of system. And when we have this special type of system, when three forces act in the same plane on the mass and equilibrium, then all the lines of action meet at one common point. So if I go back to the picture here, do you notice that if you were to draw a line where the weight is, where the reaction here is, and where the reaction here is, all three meet at this one point here? Okay. This is actually Lamy's theorem. So before you write it down, I'd like you to draw this picture as an example. So this is an example of using Lamy's theorem. Okay, you got that drawn? Oh, yeah. Mm Okay, you got that? Okay. Got it? Okay. So, Lamy's theorem when three forces act in the same plane on a mass in equilibrium, then all the lines of action meet at one common point. 
Now, actually, I, I no need to do the proof. So, um, this is Lamy's theorem, if you can write that down. Also called the tree force theorem, because there's three forces in it. Okay, he's got that? Yeah. Now, there is actually another way to state Lamy's tree force theorem. We can actually give it as a formula. Um, we won't bother with the proof. So when you have three forces, F1, F2, and F3, and they act in the same plane on a single point in equilibrium, then, so as a formula, you can write it like this. Now, before you write it down, I'll just draw what that means. Um... Yeah, well, I explain it here in words, but it's much better to draw this. So imagine you have some mass, and there's three forces on it. Let's say one this way, F1, one this way, F2, and let's say one this way, F3. Yeah? Indeed. Theta 1, theta 2, and theta three there's a relationship between the three of these now it actually might look familiar to some of you from trigonometry uh, if you've seen it before you can say f1 over sine theta one equals f2 over sine theta two equals f3 over sine theta three this is another way to state Lamy's theorem does this remind you of anything from trigonometry That's it, yeah, yeah, yeah. The sign rule. rule, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's exactly like the sign rule, isn't it? Um, so I think you should draw this with this definition also. Okay, have you got that? Okay. Okay, you got that? 
Yeah, okay. Um, did you draw this too? Yeah, you drew this? Can I continue? Yeah, okay. So let's have a look at our first example of using Lamy's theorem. A 10 kilogram ball of radius 5 centimetres hangs on a smooth wall by means of an 8 centimetre string which is attached to the wall in the ball. Find the tension in the string. So let's draw this. It's a 10 kilogram ball of radius 5 hangs on a smooth wall by means of an 8 centimetre string. So let's draw that. We have our wall here. And the, the ball is hanging on it. And it has a radius of 5 centimetres. And there's a string here of length 8 centimetres, I believe. Yeah. And the mass is 10 kilograms. So let's draw our forces in red. First things first, we definitely have a weight. True? So this will be 10g, which is 98.1 newtons. Okay. Now, we'll have a reaction here, or. Now, what's interesting is this or must pass through the center because it's perpendicular to this surface, which is a tangent to the circle. So it has to point here, and it has to go like that. And that actually forces the tension force to also pass through the center because of Lamy. So everything has to pass through the center here. Okay. That's really good because if you draw this triangle on the left, this triangle here, the base, how big is it? Five, yeah. Uh, the hypotenuse, how big is it? Five plus three. Yep. And therefore this side? from Pythagoras. Yeah. 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 So can we know this angle? We can. We'll just type in theta is tan inverse 12 over 5. Yeah, yeah, go ahead, yeah. 67.38 degrees. So here we have t cos and here we have t sine. t sine 67.38, what should that equal? What should that equal? What should it equal? Come on guys. No, no, what should it equal? Yeah, come on. So that's equal to. Uh, thank you. So if you divide, we can now get the t. Okay. One oh six newtons. See how useful Lamy's theorem is? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Question? Mm -hmm. Hang on, sorry, at the back first, yeah? Uh, in the question. How did I get 13? How did I get first? How did I get 13? Yeah, and how did I get 12? Yeah, so there you go. Hello, yeah? Yeah, my question is, is it not supposed to be T sine all over, um, T all over sine something is supposed to be? No, we can do an example where we use that formula in a moment. Which formula did you use here? Just up equals down. Okay, up equals down. Continue. Do you have it? Well, you can also use, like, you line with here. Yeah, you could. But it, another example might be better. 
Whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, 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 uh. Come back for the second pass. Yep. Uh, 9.50. I told you. It's 9.22 now. It's well, well late. Okay, have you got that? Can I continue? Yes? Now, next one. <coughs> a 40 centimetre pole is attached at right angles to a wall and supported by a 50 centimetre stay attached to its end. The mass of the pole is 10 kilograms and centre of gravity is 10 centimetres from the wall. So let me draw this picture now. So you have some pole here, uh, but it's it's not it's not uniform. So the mass seems to be centered a little bit <coughs> nearer to the wall. Uh, the length of the pole is forty centimeters, but the center of gravity is here at ten centimeters. Okay. There's a fifty centimeter stay attached to its end. So. That would be here to here, that's 50 centimetres. Okay. The mass of the pole is 10 kilograms, so this is a 10 kilogram pole. Uh, find the tension and reaction force. So I want the tension here. Uh, by the way, we, we did this last week. How should I draw the reaction force here? Up, down, left, right, uh, uh, up, right, <coughs> up, left, down, left, down, right. How do I draw it here? Up, right, isn't it? Yeah. Like here. And then which way is the weight? Down. Straight down. Now, what do we know about these three forces? They have to meet. So now, just before you try this, just a word of warning. Um, it looks like I drew this at right angles, but I, I don't think it's necessarily at right angles here. It's just how I drew it. Okay. So I mean, it could be right angles. I don't know. I'm just saying. I've not, uh, I. Don't think it's right angles here. There's no reason to think it's right angles here. Um, I'll give you a little hint before you start, okay? You can know that this is right angles, right? Can you know this angle? Yeah. So can you know this angle? Uh, yeah, you can know th this angle here, can't you? Yeah. Um, also, can you know this distance? Yeah, do you know this distance? Yes. And do you know this distance? Yes. Now, if you know this distance, and you know this distance, can you know this distance? Yes. And can you know these angles? So, you can, you can build it up slowly, okay? So, what you should do, after you get the angles here, you should try and get this length. Because then it means on this triangle, you can get the angles then. Because you already know this length. What is it? Ten. Ten. So if you know this length, can you know this angle? Ten. Yeah, so then you're done. So really, you should focus on trying to get the angles and then this length. And remember, you already know this length here. Yeah. And actually, I'll give you even one more little hint. Um, these two lines are parallel, aren't they? Because yeah. they're both pointing down. How big is this length here? 30. 30. So what's the proportion here? 1 to 3. Okay. This compared to this will be in the exact same proportion. So if this length is three times bigger than this length, therefore, this hypotenuse will also be three times bigger than this length. Now that's useful, because that gives you 
a quicker way if you didn't want to use trigonometry. Okay. Anyways, I like this one. I'll give you a minute to try and figure it out. It's a good one. See if you can get this. Yep. I should say buy a 50 centimeter stay. It's okay? Yeah? yeah. What were you checking, Ming? The mass. The mass? That's 10. Need your charger now? No. No. Okay, got that finished? Let's have a look. Guys, we'll, ha we'll have a look now. So, first thing, did you get the angle here? Let me draw it. What angle did you get? Tan inverse. Well, if that's 40 and that's 50, how big is this side? 30 <coughs> centimeters. Right, so what angle did you get here? 26.87? Yeah. And that's 90. Yeah. Uh, so what's this angle here? 53.13. Okay, now this side here is 40. And I think I would like to get this side here. I'll just call it H. So I can say tan 36.87. 
equals h over 40. So h is 40 tan 36.87. So what is that for h? So what's the h here? No, it's not 30. Oh, here I wrote 40. Thank oh, that's what you mean. Sorry, thank you. 30. Thank you. So, um, what's the, the H here? 22. H is 22.5. Okay, so we know this height here. Now, let me draw the other triangle. This is 10. This is 22.5. So, what's this angle here? Tan inverse 2.25. What's that? Tan inverse 2.25. Four. Okay, good. Now, let's look at the forces. So what force do we have acting to the left here? We have T cos 36.87. What should that equal? That should equal R cos... Um, 66.04, right? And then you can say, or sine 36.87 plus T sine, I'm sorry, I wrote 36, but I should have, I'm going to start with the T. T sine 36.87 plus or sine 66.04 what should that equal? MG. Yeah, mg, which is 98.1. Yeah? Now, can someone tell me what cos 36.87 is, please? 0 0.8. 0 0.8t, and then cos 66.04? Zero point four one or equals zero. And then we have zero point six T plus uh, what's sine sixty six point oh four? Nine one or that should equal ninety eight point one. Now what type of problem do we have here? Simultaneous. Now we want to think about what's the best multiplication to do. Uh, if I multiply this by 5, I'll get a 4. And if I multiply this by 5, I get a 3. So, should I multiply them? By 10. Yeah, by 10, by 5. <sighs> what can I both get them equal to? <coughs> Hang on. 3, 5, 4, 2, yeah. 8, 6, 48, is it? Or 24? Or 12? 24. No, I know. I'll just, it doesn't matter. What am I doing? I'm dealing with decimals anyways. Uh, I'll just multiply this by 1.2. And I'll multiply this by 1.67. Actually, the first time. Yeah, I could do that as well. I could do that as well. I was thinking of making them both equal to 1, but might as well make them both equal to 0 0.54, is it? Yeah, okay, Bella, let's multiply this by 0 0.6 and multiply this by 0 0.8. I think that'd be the best thing. 0.153? Ah, let's just go with 0.6 and 0.8 now. Uh, okay, so if I go with 0.6 and 0.8, what do they become? If I multiply by 0.6 and 0.8, so 0.6 times 0.8 is? 4.8, yeah? T minus, now if I multiply this by 0.6, what do I get? 2.46 or equals 0. And then here is 0.48t, and if I multiply this by 0.8? 0 0.72. 0 
0.7284 and then lastly uh, the 98.1 times 0.8 Okay, so let us do the second minus the top. So 0.728 plus 0.246. Plus 974? Or equals 78.48. Sorry, got a bit squished there. So now I have my answer for or. Or is 78.48 divided by 0.974. What do I get there? Okay, and then I can use this to get the T because I can say T is 0.41 over 0.8. Did I get that right? Yeah, 0 0.41 over 0.8 or. So if you multiply this by 0 0.41 and divide by 0 0.8, what do you get? So multiply by 0 0.41 and divide by 0 0.8. What do you get? 41.3 newtons. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. How would you like the force at 6.87 equals R force 6? How would you like that? Left equals right. The force pointing to the left equals the force pointing to the right. Huh? What are you asking me, man? What's the force left here? How big is this force? No, this force. How big is this force? Not the angle, the force. What's this force? Do you know? This is T cos theta. And this force here? Yeah. You know this, don't you? Or not? So, T cos equals or cos. Left equals right. Yes, Paolo? Which one? The 30. The 30? Yes. Well, how big is it from here to here? It's 40. And how big is it from here to here? So how big is it from here to here? I'm only drawing this one. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, write this one down. We have another one to do. Yeah? So write the reaction function down. Well, were you here last week? Yeah. So do you not remember we did this question last week? There's a force. Yeah, what did we do with? <coughs> we did exactly this last week. No, we, we actually the last week was the question of the so there was a there was a force here, wasn't there? Yeah. And I called it what letter? I called it X, didn't I? And there was a force here, and what did I call it? What did I call it? And so I put the two together and I get this, okay? We did this last week. Okay, did you write this down now? Not yet, okay. Okay, you got that? Yes? Jason, you got it? 
Okay, next one. A 13 kilogram ladder of length 13 meters is up against a wall and its foot is five meters from the foot of the wall. The wall is, sorry, I should say smooth and the ground, I should say ground, is rough. What is the angle of the total reaction force? Let's have a look. Oh, come on. Right, let's see. Um, so, how long is the ladder? I said it was 13 meters. And what did I say the mass was? I said it was 13 kilograms. And the base here is, I said, 5 meters. So if that's 5 and that's 13, how big is this? 12. 12 meters. Okay. How many forces? Exactly 3. What force is here? Weight. And this wall is smooth, so what direction is the reaction? Horizontal, like this. We'll call that or. And then there's a force here where you combine the friction and the reaction. So it's at an angle here. I'll call it F. Now what do we know about these three forces? They're going to meet. So if I draw a vertical line here, a horizontal line here, then it means that force must meet up there too. My question is, it's actually quite short. I just want you to give me this angle. That's all I want, this angle here. So I'll give you a minute. It's not as long as the last one. Shall I take you one minute? Okay, you should be finished that now. Um, how big is this side of the triangle? And how big is this side? So theta is tan inverse 12 over 2.5. I drew my 12 funny. Okay, so what is, uh, uh, what is that please? Say again. That's it. Didn't we do a question like this last week? Didn't we? Why don't you check your notes and tell me? I think we did one like this last week, didn't we? Guys, can you check your notes, please? Didn't we do this last week? Can you tell me what answer we got when we did it using principle of moments. Didn't we do this last week? It seems familiar. Did we? 
Yeah. No, we didn't. Same way. We didn't do this one last week? No? 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 Okay. Alright, fine, I thought we did. Okay. Last one now. A one kilogram mass hangs from the ceiling by two strings that make an angle of 30 and 40 with the ceiling. So, you have a mass here of one kilogram. It's hanging from the ceiling. You know what I'll do? I'll just draw it as a point. One kilogram. This angle here is 30. And this angle here is 40. And this is one kilogram. And uh, this here is 9.81 newtons. There's a force here, T. And a force here, I'll call it S. Now, this is an example where you have to use the formula I gave you. I want you to try this. And my tip before you start is to get these three angles. See what? I'm sure you can. What's the pressure? Hmm? What's the pressure? Find T and S. Now, come on in. So why were you late this morning? Okay. Right, have you got this? So, yeah. let's have a look. How big is this angle here? Very good, 110. Now, if that's 30, it means that this angle uh, here is 30, and this here is 90. So that makes this one here 120. Now, if that's 40, it means uh, this angle here, how much? 40, and this is 90, so how much is this? 130. So you can say uh, 9.81 over sine 110 equals T over sine 130. So you can easily get the T. Likewise, you can say this is equal to S over sine 120. So you can easily get the S. S will be 9.81 sine 120 over sine 110. And T would be 9.81 sine 130 over sine 110. So, what's the T and what's the S now? S is 9. Okay, and the T? 7.99? Oh, 9, 9. So 8 then. Yeah. Yeah. 8 so 9 and 8 newtons. Ok. 
Okay? Yes? <clears throat> Can I close this? Okay, close this. Yeah. All right, so I'll let you, let's see, what's the next topic here? Yeah, next one's easy. Uh, okay, I'll let you try these for a few minutes. Um, I don't know how many's in the workbook there. Let's have a look, actually. start on them. I'm looking at them and I can see that not all, not all, but most of the questions require the formula. But some of the questions require that you say that they meet at the, uh, at the common point. So question one, I did one like that. Question two, three, that's similar. Yeah. Five, six, yeah, all these questions are very similar to what I did. You shouldn't have any trouble. There's only really two types of questions. One where you have to say they meet at a common point, or one where you have to use the formula. There's only two types. All right, can you try those for a few minutes, and then we'll start the next lesson. Question? reaction is always perpendicular. So There's a reaction here. Can be this way and this way. This must be zero newtons if the wall is smooth and there's no screw if it's free. But if you had a screw, then yeah, you could have this. Well, I don't think it'll be perfect. Well, it might not be perpendicular. You know, it's not It's not perpendicular. To this. Yeah. Because look, this is smooth. Okay. Now, if it's not 
smooth, you can make a little friction. So you can change this. So I can call this like X. So if you can change this, it means you can change this. Which question? Yeah, let's have a look. <coughs> That's the theorem. The rule is you must use the, the center where the three forces meet. No, no, no. You have to use the center point where the three of them meet. Yeah. And what else? So I need to use the uh, so if the surface is empty, it's a pure Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 So yeah. Just, uh, Dude. 